All right, thank you for staying with us. We've still got Felix Romark all the way from Ghana now talking about the state of the facility right there, talking about the Babayara Stadium. Now, Felix, thanks for staying with us. Um, so what will be the expectation of the fans? Because uh, Ghana's next qualifier will be against Sudan. It must win match against Sudan. And sadly, they are not playing at home. Well, uh, we can tentatively say that we won't be playing at home. Uh, we have up, up until October to fix the things that CAF has required. So we need to make sure that the pitch meets the standard. We need to make sure that there is a media tribune, there is a media center, it's in good condition. Uh, there are other things that CAF has requested that we put you know, uh, uh, in place. And I'm sure that that's what the ministry and the uh, National Sports Authority would want to put you know, uh, in, in place before inviting CAF again to come and have an inspection before we can get back the license to play in October. But you look at the alternative. If, if, if you are going to Nigeria, if that is the Ivory Coast that we are going, that is going to cost a lot of money. Because one, you need to rent a training pitch wherever. If it is in Nigeria, you need to rent a, a training pitch for the team. The team has to travel, the cost of travel by flight in and out. And now that you are losing about 40,000 spectators that you normally would get at the Barbara Aspo Stadium. It means that the government and the ministry must fly or bar supporters to whichever country they choose to play this game. And that will be at the cost of the taxpayer. So our supporters, our citizenry, they are still worried about the amount of money that will be used to, to, to in terms of logistics for us to play games away from Ghana. And some of us ask, this money could have been invested in the maintenance of the pitch. If you go back to 2022, when CAF issued a communique, you know, uh, 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 suspending about 23 countries from playing their games at their home because they are not meeting the club licensing requirement, a lot of them have gone back to fix their, their issues. Mali, for instance, have now they, they now have five stadiums that meet the criteria. Nigeria have three. Ivory Coast have six that hosted the AFCON in January. And you ask yourself, what have we been doing as a country? If you quite remember, uh, some few months ago, Ghana hosted the African Games. We spent almost 36 million renovating the stadium that was already 70% completed. Mm. And up to now, we didn't even meet the CAF standard to host matches at the Legon uh, Sports uh, uh, Complex. The Accra Sports Stadium is also not in good condition. The Sipon Stadium that hosted Ghana's Hafcon in 20 to 2008 is in bad condition. So it is so shocking and so surprising that due to lack of uh, a proper leadership and maintenance culture, Ghana, a football nation, can't get one quality pitch or quality stadium to meet a calf category three game in Ghana. And that's something that authorities have to bow their, their heads down in shame. If for nothing at all, we are in a political season where election will be coming on in, in December. If you look at Ghana, if for nothing at all, no matter which political background you are coming from or which political divide you belong to, football is something that unites us. So for us to lose the opportunity of even witnessing our own national team play away from Ghana is a big disgrace for a football country like Ghana. Already we have a league that is not attractive, a league that is at its lowest, and now we have to watch our national team play in a different country. And that is how low Ghana football has sunk, or if not sinking. Mm, true, and uh, we just hope that things can be revived over there in Ghana and because I know the fans do enjoy football, I've seen the videos of football fans that are quite passionate when it comes to their football. They love their football, both in the uh, Ghana Premier League and also watching the Black Stars play. And it's quite uh, heartbreaking to know that these fans will not get to enjoy their Black Stars are playing right there on home ground. But looking at what has happened with uh, the Black Stars of Ghana in their last two games, and of course the coach Otto Ado also complaining about the bad pitch, um, is there a chance? I mean, it's, it's early days, but with what we've seen so far with the Black Stars, uh, is there a chance for them to still uh, qualify for the AFCON? Well, if there is a chance because they have their destinies in their own hands, and sure. that is where the chance is. But having watched the other three teams in the group, I've watched Niger, I've watched the Sudan versus Angola game, and I can tell you for a fact that the Black Stars are playing the worst football 
in that particular group. Currently, they lighted with just a point in that particular group, and they have to play against Sudan. And this is a Sudan team that is coached by a former Blasters coach, a Ghanaian international, Kwesi Apia. He knows this Ghana team very, very well. And it's assisted by another Ghanaian, Ignatius uh, Osaifosu. So this is a technical team that knows Ghana very, very well. And for Ghana to book qualification to Morocco come next December, they need to pick up a maximum of six points against the Sudanese team. But let's not take anything away from Sudan. They look good. They are solid as a unit. They defend very, very well. They are a very combat team. And that is something that I don't see the national team of Ghana having. Already, we are conceding. We've conceded in every game we've played since, you know, Otto, Otto Ado, uh, got the, the, the second appointment in, in coaching the blaster. So it is going to be a very, very difficult task. Now that if things don't go well and we don't get to play our home games, in this qualifier, it is going to be very difficult for us to qualify for the AFCON next year in Morocco. But you see, yes, we complain about pitches, but we've had situations where Ghana have played on a better pitch, especially in the Ivory Coast, but they couldn't get out of, the, of that particular group against Mauritania, uh, Egypt, and then Cape Verde. So it tells you that, yes, pitch might be a problem in Ghana, but the football itself it's not, there's no quality in the football that we are playing. We are not playing together as a unit. Yes, we have individual uh, players with a lot of talent playing in the top leagues in Europe. But together as a team, they play for the Blasters with no urgency. They play as if there is nothing at stake. And that is the situation we find ourselves in. In the World Cup qualifiers, it looked quite good, though we lost against Comoros. But we are on the brink of not qualifying for the next half corner in Morocco. And it won't be surprising because if you look at in recent recent performances in the half corner, we, we can't even get out of the group stage. And when that trend continues, you will even find it difficult qualifying for the tournament itself. And that is the situation we find ourselves in. So for me, yes, we have a slim chance because our destiny is still in our hands. If we win our remaining games, we can't book qualification. But we are in a situation where Every point must be picked in the remaining three uh, remaining three games. Mm. All right, so thank you very much, Felix Romark, uh, right there for giving us analysis of the Black Stars of Ghana and also uh, hoping that uh, the pitch can be fixed. Talking about the Babayara Stadium, right there in Ghana, where the Black Stars will get to play their home game. If not, they have to travel away from home uh, to play their game against Sudan. Thank you, Felix, for joining us today. We hope to have you some other time, especially after the round of games uh, uh, this weekend in the Ghana Premier League. Thank you.